Hey everybody, my name is Chris Tharp, and today we are looking into using Playmaker and a quick overview of a couple things that it does. In particular, we're going to make this little mushroom react to being bumped by a game character. So, first things first. This little guy is just a game sprite that uh, my lady actually drew up for me. So nothing special going on, just pretty. What we're going to do is give it an animation. So we'll hit Control 6, it'll pop up our animation window, hit Create, and we'll call it Shroom. Looks like I already have a shroom bump. We'll do a shroom bop. There we go. We're going to come down here and hit the record button. Hit E for rotate. And then rotate it over a little bit. Go a little further in our timeline and then rotate it back. And then finally, I'm going to bounce it out by selecting right here in our timeline, making sure your original keyframes are selected. Hit Control C, Control V, and you should now have a looping animation. If we just hit space bar right there, not too bad. All right, we're going to exit out of that. And by default, if you just play it right now, it continuously does its animation. So we don't want that to happen. We want it to play the animation whenever it's impacted by the character. So we're going to go up to Window, down to Animation, over to Animator. And it's our animation block we just created. We're just going to right click, go to create empty state, right click that, and then set as layer default state. We're going to go back up to the animation we just created, right click it, and select make transition, and then just drag on down to our empty state. Then you're going to want to click the transition there. Make sure has exit time is checked, and drag this little guy back. Uh, what this is doing is it's setting it up so that whenever the object is created, it just sits there in the empty state. However, if we activate the shroom bop, it'll play the animation one time and then transfer into that empty state. Actually, that works pretty well. All right, we can go back over to our scene tab here and let's make it react to our player. So, we're going to need a collider. So, we're going to go to Component Physics 2D. Make sure you have the object selected. There we go. All right, up to components, physics 2D, and we'll do a, a box collider is fine. And you can go down here and select edit collider to be able to affect the shape of that. So we'll just match it. Oop. There we go. Match it to the shape of your object, give or take. And you want to make sure uh, is trigger is enabled. So make sure that's toggled on. So that's essentially the hitbox for our object. 
Now we just need it to play the animation whenever it's hit. And we could do that with C sharp. However, um, Playmaker is not only easy to use, but easy to reuse so that you can duplicate those elements over and over again. And I think it's pretty awesome. So we're going to do it with that. I'm going to select Add Component, go to Playmaker. Playmaker Finite State Machine, and a new component will pop up here. You can just hit Edit. All right, now the way these work is essentially a cause and effect sort of deal. So each state is um, a condition um, that your game object is under. And it can either, it can be all sorts of different directions, but I try and look at it as a cause and effect. So we need to say if the object is impacted by the player, then we play our animation. So in our cause, that's our first state here. We're going to go down to physics 2D and select... 2D trigger events. So what we have here is an on trigger enter 2D event and then we just select our collider tag. In this case it's going to be player for our player character. And then we need a send event. So we're going to hit event right here. Event browser and just select finished for now. It's a nice default. All right, select the send event, select finished, and then we're gonna right click an empty space, add state, select our first state or our cause, and select finished. And you can drag that over. So we have our cause in the event that the player impacts our object, what'll happen? We want it to play the animation. So we're gonna go to action browser, pop up here, Select animator. Make sure animator, not animation. Two different functions. Select animator play. And then we can pop down here. What do we name it? Shroom bop. S H R O O M B O P. Shroom bop. All right, we have our cause and effect. And then we're actually. I think it takes about a second, right? So we're going to add a timer in here as well. Go down to time and select wait. Yeah, just leave it at a second. Select finished for your finish event. And then we're just going to loop this back around just in case we ever end up hitting the same mushroom twice. And let's see what we got so far. Uh, not too bad, a little underwhelming. What we can do is hit Control-6 and go back and edit this animation. What I'm going to do is just select all the keyframes and then drag them like so. We'll get that up to right in there. There we go, that's a little bit slower, feels a little more pronounced. Let's see how it looks. That's a little better. I'm going to jump back over here and just extend this by two seconds, just to leave it plenty of room. And there we have it reacting to the animation. Just to add a little bit of extra something in there, I'm going to throw in a particle effect. So what you're going to want to do is pop up to game object, 
we're going to create an empty object. And it's right where we need it to be, at least in 2D space. We can check the 3D space by just hitting this tab right here. And you can see it's way up front compared to the rest of our stuff here. Pop this back. There we go. Reselect that tab. And go over to Add Component. Go to Effects and select Particle System. Now we have a base particle system on our empty game object here. And what we can do. Just mess with the settings a little bit so that it goes up instead of down. God damn it. There we go. Gravity modifier. I'm going to select that and go for a 0 0.1. Oh, sorry. A negative 0 0.1. And then simulation speed, we're going to change from 1 to a 0 0.7. Just to slow things down a little bit. And you can mess with all this stuff. It's not really uh, that big of a deal. It's really just connecting it all together. Activate collision. There we go. All right, the important thing here is in the rendering tab, you need to give it a material. So what I've done is created one using, uh, let's see, this image right here. It's just a little sphere. And I did that by going over here to materials. If you don't have materials folder, you're gonna wanna make one for sure. And you just right click an empty space, go up to create, and select material. And then you're going to take your base image that you have, in my case it was just the little, little circle guy, and uh, drop it right in here. And that's going to give you your base image. And if it's a little too dark, you can select emission right here, and then redrop it right there. And that's pretty much the basics of the material for it. So we're going to go back and add that to it. Once again in the rendering tab, just drag your material and drop it right in there. All right. I'm going to go ahead and change the emission so that it's not going so crazy. do is we'll have it do a burst we click this plus button and we can actually do uh, a variable in the count and do a random between two constants which is pretty nice so we can select this say maybe five and then this maybe 25 so that way, whenever that burst occurs, it'll be somewhere between 5 and 25 particles that it emits. Let's see, single cycle. Oh, that all looks pretty good. I'm going to hit stop here. Uh, next, all we need to do is parent it to our object. So where's our object at? Here it is. I'm going to take that in our hierarchy and just drag it all the way down so I can see it next to our game object we just created. There we go. Dragged it right above it. What I'm going to do is take our game object, our empty game object that we added the particle system to. I'm going to select that in the hierarchy drag it right over top of our little mushroom here and just let it go 
and it is now a child of our mushroom which means they will line up together we're going to select our mushroom go back over to the finite state machine and select edit and we need to activate and deactivate that particle system whenever it is between these different states so we're going to go over here where it needs to be activated first select action browser and go up to game object select activate game object and it'll have use owner as default you just want to select that and instead specify game object and then you can come back over here to the hierarchy and just select our object with our particle system and drag it and drop it right in there all right I'm also gonna extend this time a little bit more another two seconds to five on the weight there just so we don't have our particles cut off on the screen because that's not fun and I'm going to select this action hit control C and then pop right back over here to the first state and hit control V now essentially it's pretty cool because this is the same exact function but we can just switch it to false or have it do the opposite of what we're having it doing over here by toggling this right here so it'll deactivate it in this state and activate it within this state let's see also we want to select the object and make sure that whenever it starts in the scene is deactivated so that's going to be right up here all right we'll press play see what happens Oh, our particles scaled up for some reason. I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but we can fix that pretty easily. Let's see. I'm going to hit R with it selected and just drag it down. And make sure it's deactivated, and we'll give that another shot. Well, that's not too bad of a job might go into the material here and just increase the brightness we're going to select this HDR tab right here and I'll just pop it up to a plus one see if that makes any difference I like that a little better. It matches with the mushrooms. Alright guys, well, we learned how to do a couple things with uh, Playmaker and the Finite State Machines. If you're new to the whole thing, then that's going to be a big help for you. A huge leg up. I've heard of free versions. I don't know what's up with that but you can get a paid version on the unity assets store and i'd say it's well worth your money i hope you guys have a good time with it and like and subscribe take it easy